following is a paid informational program. The views and opinions expressed are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or advertisers of WOVL Radio. It's time for the Equity Equals Freedom podcast on WOBL. And now, here's your host, Rick Rucker. Uh, that's right, folks. Back again, Equity Equals Freedom podcast. Uh, myself and my co-host, Jenny, in the building. Hey. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read this boring legal disclaimer over twice uh, just to cover ourselves here. The primary purpose of this radio show is to inform, entertain, and educate Information, opinions, and recommendations presented during this radio show do not con- constitute legal or other professional advice, opinions, or endorsements of any kind. Equity Capital Mortgage Group is a division of Gold Star Mortgage, uh, NMLS number 3446, Equal Housing Lender, Gold Star Corporate Address 100, Phoenix Drive, Suite 300, Ann Arbor, Michigan, 48108. All right, now we got that out of the way, the boring legal stuff. Um, we were just in here talking about drinking PBR and going to uh, country concerts and all that good stuff. So, um, uh, Jenny, my co-host, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell the folks, you know, a little bit about yourself as well. Yeah, so I'm Jenny Gennaro, um, full-time real estate agent with EXP and Iconic Partners team. Also run my own staging business, which uh, is pretty much about to be in full effect. And I am on uh, the Investor Source Founders with my buddy Rick here. Oh yeah, Investor Source, the pandemonium of Investor Source. <laughs> and uh, with us uh, actually today, my good friend, uh, Mr. Mark Fetterman, who's actually originally from the area. What's up, Mark? Absolutely, grew up in Auburn, Ohio, and uh, with Remax Traditions, yeah. a uh, team leader. I own a real estate brokerage in North Ridgeville, and uh, Jenny and I are frenemies. She's with a different company, and uh, I think we'll take her up on some of that stage. And All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so we'd love that. Real estate business is a small business, so we tend to we tend to be friends here. We're just joking. Yes. Um, so, Mr. Fetterman, tell us a little bit more about, uh, I know that you come from a retail background. Um, how did you take the retail, like the hustle of the retail? I know that you, you ran like a, was it multi-million dollar uh, business portfolio on that platform? Like, how did you switch from going from retail and, and Best Buy, correct? To yes. The real estate business. It's quite the transition. Right, right. Totally is. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, every time somebody buys a home, they always rush right to Best Buy and they get their appliances and their TV and their, their music to listen to WOBL. Right. <laughs> Cheap plug. <laughs> That's free. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Thank yep. you, WOVA. Yeah, so uh, I worked there for about 15 years, started part-time, shot up to uh, full-time, and uh, ended up becoming a district manager, which brought me back to the area. Worked there for a while. The thing I love most about working in the retail sector is people come in all day long with problems and problems to solve, and it reminds me a lot of real estate. Rather, you're downsizing I say side sizing, you know, if you're taking one family and creating, you know, two different homes, or if you're taking two homes in the one family, or you lost a loved one and you need something bigger or smaller, there's just all kinds of problem solving. And I love taking clients through that journey and everybody has a different kind of problem. And uh, I think what excites me most is being able to solve all those problems. And when I think to Best Buy, you know, we had the geek squad, so to say there, and uh, people would always bring their little computers in and they'd have some kind of issue and problem that you'd have to Everybody work. needs an IT nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs an IT nerd. And uh, it was a services business. You know, Best Buy doesn't make a whole lot of revenue. or mo- They don't make their money from the technology, right? Because Amazon and these big companies come in and where, where it really turns on is when you turn on the fun. That's well, actually a good, good, good question. So when Amazon came in, did that ever impact the Best Buy business? Well, not to talk too much about Best Buy, but still. That's, <laughs> right, that, right. Was, how was or that plus. transition? Did it like him? Yeah, yeah, tomorrow we're going to get all these demand letters from him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. when Amazon was really um, rolling out back in 11, 12, 13, and this is after we obviously dealt with the recession, so you get one beating after another, right? Yeah. Um, Amazon, the thing is, is that they have a good pricing, not so much on TVs anymore, just as a consumer, but they have good pricing. Right. But if you needed it to get set up or you bought this new computer and your kids broke it or they dropped it, 
they had nowhere to take and nowhere to go. So I think where Best Buy outmaneuvered the big beasts, Amazon, is they, they have somewhere free to go when there are problems and there's issues with stuff. And I think that's what makes them relevant. Just like the real estate agent of today, I hear all kinds of people saying, oh, my gosh, real estate agents are so dead. You can go online and oh, buy a God. house. Oh, no, you cannot. Yeah, that's terrible. I think of like when you say like Best Buy and when I think of buying a TV, I would not even think of Amazon. And let me tell you, I'm addicted to Amazon because staging stuff is amazing on there. But you need to go like see it. Right. You want to go in person. You want to see it. You want to touch it. You want to make sure it's, you know, the size that you want. So I feel like. I would never have thought to go on Amazon to buy a TV, but yeah, or to go online and get a real estate agent for a flat fee and hope that they're going to work for you. Good <laughs> yeah. luck with that. Yeah, it's, well, it's the same. You know, the the biggest thing that we often hear is like the automation. It's, even on the lending side, you know, there's a lot, there's a certain mortgage companies that are trying to automate everything, and um, to you know, to an extent, you know, Equity CMG. Yes, we're about automation. We're about streamlining, making things easy. But there's nothing like that personal touch. And this is, you know, folks, when you're buying a house, you need a person that not only understands the law to cover yourself. You know, there's a reason why EMDs, like these are legal contracts. A lot of people think you could just walk away from a transaction. But um, the biggest to me, the biggest thing I hear all the time is like, um, is uh, automation or is uh, the new AI wave, is that going to put you out of business? I just laugh at it because, you know, the average person that either tries to do a FISBO or tries to do it online winds up losing money because there's two, re there's two realtors in a transaction, right, obviously. So if you're working with a buyer's agent that nobody knows, it's no different than the prequal letter that they get from the lender. If they don't know that person's name, like they're just you're one of 20 or 25 in this type of market, one of 20, 25 names. If you don't have a Jenny Gennaro or a Mark Fetterman, you know, attached to you, then how do you even negotiate? So the online thing, guys, like, you know, we've seen I can't tell you. I mean, I, I'm not going to throw any competition on her, but but there's been like 12 or 13 online lenders that have gone completely bankrupt because they, they, the biggest sell on their end is having minimal margins, super low interest rates, blah, blah, blah. But at some point, you have to pay in order to have good service. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, when you say that, I think, you know, when you say those people that nobody knows, I think as realtors that, that play in the field all day long, I think we also know those some of those larger companies that we do know and we know to stay away from them. Um, because they don't deliver the customer experience for our clients. Correct. And we know when they work with somebody like yourself who, you know, owns the experience in and out, just like we did when that broken TV would come in or that yeah. laptop, right? Um, you could touch it, feel it, see it, be close to it. Um, if you're going through all the emotions of, of buying a property or selling a property, you're already at your wits end with anything, right? Yeah. No matter what. It's such an emotional transaction, you know? And so, yeah, to have somebody who's there who, who just doesn't know the experience or doesn't want to experience it with you definitely makes it a little bit hard. And right, like that's a good analogy, the broken TV. Like you, you feel bad, you know? Like who, how do people live without those televisions these days? I don't know. But it's, it's the same thing. It's an emotional attachment. It's an emotional reaction. And to have someone who's there who can walk you through that and be there for you and support you through it. Or you're going to have someone who, who's there who's just getting one pay, payment. Well, that's all they usually care about, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, especially if you're, like I said, you're online, you know, hey, pay a flat fee of a couple thousand bucks, blah, blah, blah. Always sounds good. But then the people that are doing it real time, like ourselves, we always laugh when we see them come over. So, um, but uh, m I know, Mark, you actually, um, you came out of retail into real estate. Like, what was that transition like for you? Well, you know, I certainly didn't pick the best timing. I went from a... <laughs> A great corporate job with a very uh, corporate salary and uh, a good, you know, good guaranteed living into a world that was all commission. And, uh, you know, one thing that helped me sleep at night, you know, I never worried about making the bills or anything like that is knowing it's a customer service business. And one thing I know at the end of the day is my customers will always be at center of everything we do. Right. Rather, it's whatever lender partners we put them in front of. Rather, it's whoever we put them in front of. Always the customer's choice. We will only always guide people yeah. and facilitate the process and allow our customers to be in control. Um, I think of buying and selling houses, especially in today's market, like a video game. It's just if you buy the home, you won because there's like 10, 20 other people that are trying to buy that same exact home as you are. 
if you're selling your home and you make the most amount of money with the least amount of contingencies, you won that game. Right. So I knew at the end of the day, like by going back to my principles of customer service and taking care of the customer, putting them at center of attention, doesn't mean they're always right, but it means we can guide and learn because it's always going to be an educational experience that we're always going to win. And you know what? I got to be honest from day one for my first sale, you know, I think I was lucky enough to have somewhere around 57 or so transactions my first year. That's from, good. Yeah, wow, from a great income. Look at you. That's <laughs> yeah. great. Congratulations. So I came in swinging. Yeah. Well, <laughs> had kids to feed. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> good motivation. That, that yeah, it surely is. Listen, for my, sure. my uh, mentor, Dan Milstein, who actually wrote this, he's a best selling author, uh, author uh, Street Smart Selling, um, 17 Cents in a Dream. Um, his whole focus is, is he talks about like the customer service and like knowing your process and like dissecting your process. And this guy, you know, was closing 125 to 175, 175 loans per month from 09 to 2011. So the guy's a, just a efficiency machine. So, and that's really, you know, you know, when you're, when you're sitting down meeting with a realtor or a lender, um, the biggest thing, first of all, they need to be knowledgeable and understand, you know, what goes into the process, you know, some of the legal yeast stuff, all that good stuff. But to you, you know, both of your points, um, you know, they really need to feel at home because again, we just go back to, this is the biggest financial transactions that people are going to make in their entire life. Like you're putting a lot of faith into that person and not a knock on the people that, do a part-time, a lot of people have to switch from, you know, a full-time job and they do it part-time, but there's also part-time people where, you know, they're not, you can't get a hold of them from like nine to five. And that as a lender drives me insane mm -hmm. because I'm like, listen, like sometimes like this stuff is like real time. We have a problem. We got to work together, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, you know, somebody like yourself, that's a little bit more experienced. Like what's your advice to like, I guess, other agents in the industry when it comes to, you know, if there is a problem, like, I mean, how do you handle it, blah, 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 because there's a lot of agents that think for some reason one side needs to bulldoze the other side, and then we get caught in the middle, and it always drives me insane. I'm like, guys, no matter what, what we should care about most is the client's needs. There's no need in us arguing over something that, you know, problems happen. That's our job. That's why we get paid. We have the same goal at the end of the day, right? So it's, you know, getting either somebody in a home or somebody out of a home. And I think oftentimes we do, like, miss that. Like, it's if, if one side fails, the other side's failing. And that's not the goal. The goal is to make sure that a transaction is happening at the end of the day. And that was me. I was part-time. I got my license. I was I did it for fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that is why I did it. I thought it would help me, like, with, like, just... That's who I am. I love sales. I've always been in sales. And so I got my license. I'm like, oh, why not? You know, it's like the next best thing to do. And I did it part-time and I did it part-time and I worked in government until I didn't want to do government work anymore. And I'm like, all right, the only really way to be successful in real estate, <laughs> I know, it was a good job, don't get me wrong, but it, I wasn't happy, my heart wasn't in it. And my heart is in real estate, it's in sales. And so I, I, you know, burned the boats and did it and jumped in July, I finally quit my government job and, and jumped in and just to surround myself and be in it, it's, it's so rewarding and to work with people and know what you're doing for them and to provide a service and the connection that you're having with the client and other realtors is so important but yeah i've had some doozies with some other agents who are just like oh me too and i'm like why like are do we do we do want the same thing right at the end of the day that is what we want so yeah, right. friend of me or not i think you're my friend <laughs> <laughs> well it's that thing where you know as friend of me we're always going to negotiate the best terms for our client and i think it's fun when there's two sides in every transaction because our sellers need something our buyers need something and as real estate agents we have to facilitate all those different needs and try to move a bunch of families. Like even today, I'm working on a unique situation where you got one one family buying a house from one of my sellers. Um, they're moving cross country from Colorado. You got my sellers no moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no stress. No, no stress. <laughs> None. <laughs> Apparently, Ohio is pretty uh, low cost of living compared to the rest of yes, the country yes, right now. Yes, it and is. So <laughs> Come on, bring them all in. <laughs> yeah, bring them in. Yeah. Call, call Johnny and myself. That's and right. We'll divvy them up. Uh, <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> So we had problems, right? And, you know, one of the agents, I'll leave nameless, and hopefully maybe she is listening to this so we, <laughs> we can learn something. About. We'll send it to her if she <laughs> Exactly. The <laughs> whole thing's like been arguing and, you know, um, professional disagreeing. But when we're in a situation where we're trying to have a conversation to solve the problem, I think the number one thing we have to realize is any home you sell, 
any home you buy, there is going to be some kind of problem. Always. No matter what. When they're smooth and they're going perfect, I'm like, okay, something bad. Yes, you wait for it. Something's <laughs> happening. <laughs> like really bad. But that's what's the difference between good and great is great are like that. Yep. Like, and it's when the problem hits, what's our solution? Mm -hmm. How do we bring in our, our partners? And between nine and five, you know, you may not be able to get anything accomplished. So you call your partners and you handle those those issues. Yeah. yeah. Well, hot topic, hot, hot button some of the unsung uh, either heroes or foes often is the title piece. Mm -hmm. So um, I was talking to my good friend uh, Bree and Matt Herb over there at uh, Fidelity Title. I think they're actually uh, local as well. I think they're in Lorraine um, or maybe it's uh, Sheffield Lake. Either way, uh, I was talking to them about the problem solving component. We sat down, you know, just had a brief conversation in my office and I said, when it comes to like working with me, like the biggest thing that I look for from a title company is somebody that, to your point, when a problem happens, we got to fix it and we got to fix it fast. You know what I'm saying? And inevitably, we know that liens can pop up. We know that, you know, similar names pop up. That's probably the most often, you know, the most often thing that happens to me on our space is like when there's um, somebody that has a very common name and like there's like a lien on there or whatever. Like Michael Smith. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Michael Smith. Poor Michael Smith. He's like, man, I don't have a lien. And you're just like always arguing with them or whatever. But like I said, when I was talking to uh, Bree and Matt Herb over at Fidelity, the, the, the main things that I was like really telling them is like when you talk about partnership, like it's the lender, it's the title and it's both agents. So like if one of them, one of the four is a maniac or one of the four just goes on vacation or, you know, we know that some of this business is actually, you know, run by some older folks sometimes that are kind of on their own accord. And you're like, listen, like in the, in the heat of the moment, like we need results like as quickly as possible. And that's what attracts me towards like my partners, um, on my space or, or I guess in my arena, but what's your feedback when it comes to like, you know, if a title rep was a approaching you, like how does he get, you know, Mark Fetterman's teams, like, how would he get their business? And boy, the AC turning on just feels amazing. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's just a heated question. Yeah. <laughs> it's heating up in here. For All those right, that can't that was feel nice. It. That was good. <laughs> See what you did there. Yeah. Dad jokes. So, yeah, man. So, a couple things. It's always, you know, and a lot of questions that we talk about today, it's going to circle back to customer experience. What, you know, when a customer hears a lender that a realtor, recommends or a title company or a home inspector of course we always offer three of them or a repair person or or I'm a, a you home mentioned stager that. i'm, I'm going to come back to that. <laughs> okay <laughs> part, part that one or a stager a uh, stager right. staging yeah. is big yes it's right. it big it's, right now it really is people need me in their life they don't even know it they have they no do. idea <laughs> <laughs> it, it's going to circle back to what's the customer experience are we delivering on our goals our goals for our customers. So if I'm selling a house and I have to move and I have to use the proceeds, the money from selling my house to buy my house, I need a title company to start that title work immediately. Right away. Uh, immediately. Right, away. right yeah. the second they get it. I don't want to hear about, I couldn't get a hold of a client or any of this. Brand matters. I don't want my clients to, A, maybe have to pay for movers or rescheduling because the title company dropped the ball or a lender or anybody. It won't be me. Right. It's going to be one of the people that we work with that time. And usually that last time. Right. When it comes to a customer right. experience, which is why the agent matters. Well, it's why we why we choose. Yeah. Right. It's why why we as agents have chosen who we work with. Right. It's why we work with Rick Rucker. It's why, you know, we work with our, our certain stagers, movers even. It's why we work with our title companies because it's repeat, repeat, repeat. And we know every time they're going to get the deal done, they're going to get it handled. And we're not pushing back closings and we're not pushing back movers because and quite, I mean, that's just, that's our job is to make sure that it's getting done the proper way the first time. Mm -hmm. So we've gone through the experience. We know who works, we know who doesn't work, and that's how we build our connections. So I watch a show on Netflix called the Fi Finding McDonald's or whatever it's called, <laughs> Founding McDonald's. Oh, that's, I was going to say, aren't they true. everywhere? <laughs> right? Yeah. And we all watch the it, The Golden right? Arch. The Golden Arches. And what a story. Mm. It's a great story. And I think one thing that resonates is you ask, how do you, how do you get to Jenny or Mark and as we run our real estate teams and our companies and our REMAX offices, 
you know, how do you earn our business? Well, it's the same reason the Golden Arches requires consistency for their customers, no matter which restaurant you go to across the board. Right. We all know the ice cream machine is always broken. No oh, matter. my <laughs> God. <laughs> forget getting your friend The pay. worst. <laughs> yeah, 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 forget about it. But it, it will always circle back to if I have any customer, any of the hundreds of the thousand we uh, take care of every year now with, between our brokerage or our team, if you work with any agent on my team or you work with any agent that we surround ourselves with, with our flag, you are going to get a good customer experience no matter who you work with. It's the same reason when we go to McDonald's, if we're in Colorado and we want a Big Mac, that Big Mac's going to taste exactly the same. And that comes with the partners we surround ourselves with. The founders, hands down, the founder is one of the best testaments to American. Uh, the guy was selling milkshake machines and just created this juggernaut business and he was 55 years old or whatever and it's just um it's just funny because you know you, you see success stories like you know myself you know and like jenny like yourself that just you know none of neither none of us come from like wealth or money or anything like that we just would have been nice <laughs> yeah well i, I was like, i texted somebody that earlier i was like god it would be nice to have yeah. like a rich parent or, sure but we, we had to work for it, you know, and so no matter your background, my background, I mean, we all come from way different backgrounds, and mine just happened to be government that pushed me into this, and I was in banking before, so whatever we've done has guided us to where we're at, but... That had to be a culture shock from government. Too, oh, right? my God. It Well, so the, the easy part was is that I had gotten my license and was still in government, and then I got to watch, like, an El Stasek, and, you know, like, I got to watch... Like from behind the scenes, even though I was doing it part time, I was watching and learning. That's so to, guy, yeah. to be able to learn from those people and and how they did it and what they did, it, that was just a whole nother experience. So it just helped me be ready when I was like, all right, I'm going to jump ship. I'm ready to go. I'm jumping in. There's no looking back. And so when I was when I quit my government job, I was I felt prepared. You know, I didn't feel like blindsided. I felt like I just watched all these people do amazing things. I was in it. And, and now I'm, I'm really in it. Now I'm doing it, you yeah. know. So that was great to at least watch. You just jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Yeah. I said that today. And I'm going to say, I, I said today, like, I'm moving forward. I listened to a great podcast the other day and my let. And he was like, it's either, like, a hell yes or a hell no. You know, you're either in or you're not in because there's no in between because... Um, like teetering, it's a, it's a prison of your own. So I said, that's it. That's my line from now on. From moving forward, I'm either, I'm all in. If I'm not feeling it, bye. <laughs> well, yeah. people want to fall back. You know, that's why I keep the job. It's like, you know, if, if you're going to be in real estate, real estate is a full-time job when you're doing it right. Yeah. You, you cannot part-time your client. You cannot. And for anyone working with part-time agents, you, you, you're missing out. The good news is, since you already have an agent, you don't know what you're missing out on, and good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not soliciting. Well, I can attest to it. Yeah, I mean, as a part-time agent, I just, I didn't know as much, and I wasn't always, I was, my, the showings were in the evenings. That was yeah. just my schedule, you know, and thank God I was able to build a good customer service and a good relationship with my clients that, like, you know, I was able to do that. So they wanted to work with me, but if you aren't from that and you don't fully know that, it, it just makes it really hard. Part-time makes it really hard. I did it. It, it was a struggle. Well, imagine. You're not the first person yeah. that came out of doing it part-time. To We're just saying in general, like, you know, if you're if you're year one and you're kind of, my sister did that. You know, she mm -hmm. came to mortgages. She was part-time. She's a nurse, whatever. And then she started seeing the checks and was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> see you yeah. later. Wait, uh, I can make in one month what I made in a year. Yeah. Not, yeah oh, I mean, that's the reality of it. I, I, I think Mark can attest to this. Like, when, when you have that one protege that just comes in. And just absolutely crushes it and they get that first big check and they legit convince themselves that they're rich and you have to somehow convince them to come back and not just go on vacation it's like when you got a hot hand you got to keep going <laughs> well and, and and you put it forward right like yes you're going to get commissions based on your customer experience because we all know the more customer problems you solve the better you're doing in sales and you're creating that but what are you doing with it are sure. you are you buying the super nice cars the big houses everywhere like been there, done that. Yeah. Like for me, how do I grow a real estate brand that my customer, that solves customer problems? And how do you parlay forward into better marketing, better systems, better technology, things that will parlay your business and your brand forward? And uh, some agents do it for the commission. And don't get me wrong, I got kids to feed, right. five of them. Yeah. I do this Whoa. for the commission. Okay. Yeah. And uh, believe me, that's part of it. 
but it's a business that I will be able to generationally leave to one of those kids, right. like yeah. mine, which a is legacy. what keeps me going. Yeah, yeah a legacy. Absolutely, and that's important. I have three kids too, and that's 100% like goals at the end of the day, but that's a great point. Like it was, how can you, how do we set ourselves differently? What are we doing different? And so for me, I knew like iconic partners, it's alignment, right? Who are you aligning yourself with? And that's why, I mean, I've always done staging, but I did it on the side for like, friends and family and people who are like, hey, like, can you come do this for me? And I'm like, yeah. And then I realized, like, what am I doing? Like, I have a talent. I have a niche. I'm great at it. I love it. Why am I not helping my clients? And so that's what really made me decide I am jumping in full time with my staging business and I'm going to offer it to my clients and I'm going to help them because, you know, we all know staging gets you more money for for your house anyways. Absolutely. So 100%. Yeah. Around like 17% or something. It's, in, it's insane. I mean, it's such a good number. And I just witnessed it. I just did my first flip and I watched it happen. And we were like, whoa, how did that just happen? And so it was a, a full-blown, I mean, internal testament for me. But I'm, I'm sold on it. And that's why I'm like, okay, why am I not offering this? So I think that's just a, a great way of, you said it, like, what are we doing to help our clients? You know, how are, how are we doing more for them? Now, Mark, how did you go from, you know, you crushed it your first year, almost did 60 transactions, whatever. How do you go from that to turning it into like a brokerage and actually managing people? Like, what does that transition look like? So year one, I started to get busy. I wanted the reason why I jumped into real estate, too, is I left out the part of the Best Buy working 80, 100, 120 hours a week. And uh, especially Thanksgiving and holidays. And we, we've all lined up at Walmart, Target, Best Buy. We work. all have not, <laughs> but yeah. I got reasons to believe that uh, that is a lie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, we, so many people line up and when you're, when you're in those hustle and bustle and you don't get to enjoy the holidays that you're working so hard that your customers then got to, it has a toll on you when you have young kids and they want to see, you know, you're around and you're just beat and exhausted. So one of the things that took me to real estate was freedom. But my passion to help and take care of customers, I started to realize I caught myself still working as much. So I built a team that I can start to hand off some of my clients to that would start to take care of, take care of them. And one of the reasons why I wanted a brokerage was I wanted somewhere for my agents on my team to graduate to so they could still work with me. They didn't have to run off to like EXP or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have to run off to, you know, um, wherever they may be going because they felt bad about leaving a team. And it created this kind of weird like breakup sensation because they don't want to leave because you're their mentor and you took them from you know, um, not selling real estate and you took them through every part of selling real estate, but there becomes that time where the student graduates yeah, and they're ready to be on their own. And one of the reasons why I wanted the brokerage was to give them a place that we could still work together and we can still grow together. And then there's brand awareness that comes with being a broker owner as well. And uh, all the other benefits that come along with that. But, uh, and scaling and growing, you know, throughout the state, I felt having the brokerage, brokerage lens, I could find a lot of like-minded agents that yeah. we could work together because great agents, some of them love being on a team, but I learned through the years that many of them want their own teams yeah, or they want to be working for themselves. Sure. So by having a brokerage, we could still work together. You know what I mean? I may not promise you stock and all these things that may... Right, but they can still be on their own and still be a part of you. I, t I, had, I, th I think that's funny. I had a, get, a kid that worked for me, and he was doing exceptionally well for his career. And, you know, God bless him. You know, he was killing it for his family, all that stuff. And he got sold a dream that he's going to be vice president of a company. <laughs> and it was like a non-existent company. I'm like, titles mean nothing, bro. Yeah. Like, you are you are on fire right now. You're gonna destroy it if you if you switch in the middle. The biggest thing, like ego, the, the ego takes. That sounds over like a bank roll because there's a lot of vice presidents. Vice pres and banks. Oh my god! Oh yeah. My god. <laughs> no offense, <laughs> doing too much, but yeah, yeah <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, I was a, I was a, I was an underwriter at a uh, 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 local bank. I don't want to say anybody's name, but <clears throat> everybody was a AVP or a VP. Yeah. It's like people just get caught up in these titles, and like I tell like my loan officers, like. When you're out, I don't care what you say. You could be a partner in the firm for all I care. Yeah. Like, uh, whatever ownership you want to take, take it. But looking for and seeking, like, titles, that is, like, the ultimate, like, Fugazi. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is the ultimate, like, it's made up. Like, I just can never understood. Like, what do you want to be vice you could be vice president of the world. I just well, just it. put your name and put that in front of your name and just say that you are that. When I left government, I was in leadership, and I'm like, 
oh my god, I'm gonna leave a leadership role to go be a real estate agent. And it, it took me a second. Like, I mean, and there was my ego, you yeah. know, I mean, for sure. And I had to check myself and I was like, would you rather make way more money <laughs> or would you rather work in a nine to five and just, you know, be there for someone? Well, uh, Mark, what made you pick uh, <laughs> Remax, by the way, I meant to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it, Mark. Oh, I want okay. to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, well, you know, we, we're, uh, especially as a mortgage lender, we're friends with everybody. Mm -hmm. So we're not, you know. Disclaimer, all disclaimers today. <laughs> yeah. The, the legal guy. <laughs> know why remax <laughs> well i mean we do the average you know there's a couple of things that we won't get in too much of that because it's like your favorite sports team we can go a mile wide on why our team's better and here in cleveland we're really good at explaining why we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're good at things right so uh, or, or next year there. the reason i chose remax i was with a uh a no name discount broker prior to this and i'll leave their name out um, but, you know, it was a flat fee broker. They charged me a certain amount of money every single year. Yeah. And uh, that was it. After my first commission, they were paid for up front. And some would ask, why would you go to Remax and have advertising fees? Because that's what the fees are. Right. You're paying for the signs, the Cleveland Guardians partnership. You know, there's little percentages of money that comes from all of us. But why did I choose Remax? It was just a great culture. They got great training programs and stuff like that. And they're the number one most recognized and most trusted brand in real estate. 67% uh, of America's households knows them. We're rated the number one most trusted real estate agent out there. Ooh, I know. Boy's got that smoke right there. <laughs> I can keep going. I got EXP in the room. I got to uh, sign. Uh, <laughs> so, don't worry. We, we haven't talked about EXP yet. We will, but not today. <laughs> Listen, Al used to be my neighbor in, in oh, my old really? neighborhood. So believe me, I've heard all about oh, it. Oh, well, yeah. Al won't not let you hear about it. I mean, he's, he's great at what he does. But great exactly. Exactly. Guy, he time. is. I mean, it, and it's just, it's, you know what? I just, I always say this, like, it's for you or it's not for you. You know what I mean? Like, how many, I think there's an average on how many times people change a brokerage. It's quite a bit, especially right it, now. It is, it is it's a lot right now. the same thing with lenders. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah. so, I mean, and that's just the business. And, you know, we're constantly looking for what's better, what's going to give us more, you know. But at some point, we have to settle into a brand as well. And it just, it does follow us. And When we have no choice. We, right. A hundred percent. You're right. Because as a choice. realtor, you have to work under a brand unless you're a broker you own your own brokerage yeah right? at what point did you decide to build your own team like um a year in. oh wow yeah. <laughs> okay well i was you know i had at my peak of my career i had 2,000 employees 15 direct reports and i had my laterals so you're kind of used to helping and empowering and managing people and changing lives right you you're know? either a leader or you're not so it's just how you were you just have that in you right yeah right love yeah. that and then it sacrifices but uh the reason why I didn't like the no-name, rather you go, you know, Keller, EXP, or, you know, Remax, or one of the big ones, I had to explain the whole time I was sitting down with the customer who we were and what we were. That takes up a lot of mind power. Mm -hmm. So if I was listing your house, and we're talking about who my no-name is, but I'm excited as an agent, because I'm led on to believe I'm getting this great deal, but I have to spend all my capacity... Talking about who you are. Our time together explaining my company that you've never heard of. Mm -hmm. I pull it off because I'm okay at selling, but we're going to talk about that the whole time. Now now we have to talk about your house, and you're tired. You're bored. When I went to a big company, Remax, everybody knew who I was. Everybody, I didn't have to spend my time explaining it. You already know about the balloon. You already know who we are. <laughs> you already know we sell more real estate than anybody. You already know those things when I walk in the door. And we get to talk about you, your family, your needs, and your house. And that's why I love having a brand that people know who it is. By the way, Gary Keller, if anybody has ever heard him speak, is one of the best salespeople I've ever heard in my life. So shout out to KW and uh, big big up to Remax and EXP and my friend Kev over there. <laughs> you know, I, 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 yeah, we, I gotta just, be I gotta be politically. We got correct. people everywhere yeah, we for got, sure. We got people everywhere. I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, First Liberty Insurance, Frontline Home Home Inspectors. Uh, Ohio Fast Title and Tour de Space, who will actually, and we'll get into that a little bit, our Cinco de Mayo event um, that we have coming up, and then Investor Source will be the day before, so I'm going to be exhausted um, as well. <laughs> yeah, that's a busy two days. It's and a, a lot of those sponsors are also sponsors for um, Investor Source CLE, which is pretty amazing. We double, we double back. We they they trust it. us in branding. You know themselves. what? They know that we know what we're doing. They know that so we know I what think we're that's doing. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Mark, you're actually one of the few realtors that um, does flips as well. 
and you kind of keep your hands in pretty much like um, you know, c kind of keep your hands in pretty much like everything. Um, like what up, like what upper hand do you think that you have? Being the fact that you've walked houses and all that, you know. And as a lender, sometimes I tell people like, listen, I've walked in, I've probably walked a couple hundred, you know, buildings, uh, a couple hundred, you know, a couple hundred properties. Um, you know, I've joint ventured with some people, all that good stuff. Like, because I feel like if you're in our space, you really have to cover everything. But like, what do you think your value add is by doing that when you're dealing with like a retail customer? Well, there's a couple of things, right? Because some clients, we all want it all and with, with the higher interest rates right now and the, you know, historically high, high uh, home prices as well. You couple those things together and we all, we get a reality check pretty quick when we yeah. go out what our money gets us, right? Very so not, not <laughs> even close to as much as what it used to, for sure. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. sad. <laughs> so when it comes to opening floor plans or cosmetic updates and changes that the human eye and the buyer lens just cannot see, we get to take them through that journey. Right. You know, hey, when you when rates do drop and you can refi this house and do the things you may want to do, let's talk about opening this wall and doing this. And then let's talk about real life problems in a home. We can provide our opinion, right? You should always get a home. I'm going to do a disclaimer too. You should always get a home inspection so you best know mm -hmm. what yeah. you're looking at. Yeah. Nice. And again, frontline inspections, make sure you give my guy a shot. Yeah. Call. <laughs> front lines, Cheap front blue. lines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, so we're going to see cracks in basements and, and give you a professional opinion as a, an investor and a flipper who buys these properties and knows exactly almost to the dollar what we're going to have to stick in these properties when we buy them. You know, we do about two to four every single month. Um, and we know exactly what the it's consumers are looking for. Yeah. yeah well, well, there's, there's bet there's better people out there doing it, but we try to, yeah. we try to have a pretty good, uh, velocity going. Yeah. My guy, Doug, he does probably 300 a year and he's, he's just a machine when it comes to that stuff. See what I mean? That's a little Jeez, I just did my first one and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you guys are like Rookie. two to four months. I'm get, I am getting there, you know? Uh, I'm not going to lie. Like when I was 19, I partnered with a guy and we did like three flips and we just lost so much money. And I was like, oh, okay. So <laughs> never again, never again. Well, <laughs> never again for an extended period of time. I went to college and went back to college. Kent they graduate shout out to the golden flashes in the building um but you know once i came out of that i got into mortgages and then um i started partnering with people and that's another big thing i think in our space a lot of people think um they need to do it um by themselves because they're getting greedy or whatever and they want the whole pot and like i think that you know everybody you know we all can attest to sometimes it's better your first few to just partner with somebody that knows what they're doing yes yes J jv we call it which is a joint venture rather you're going to go in and and equally put money up and and buy the product or you're going to do a hard money loan or whatever you do you know I've, i still as a polished investor still lose money on flips right and and i'm not going to say we have it to lose it but when you're doing a lot of them. It's you, easier to mitigate. Yeah. yeah, it's like that McDonald's story. If I drop a Big Mac out of my ten Big Macs, okay, I dropped one Big Mac. I'm I still sold nine. Right, right. Uh, so, so when it comes to terms of of flipping, um, something you definitely want to reach out to. We do these investor groups with. You know, you guys That's and your up friends. Next. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a I got plug. the flyer up next. <laughs> We're just plugging away today. Yeah, I love you, it. For sure. Our, our investors keep us going. Our teams keep us going. Every first Thursday, folks, uh, shameless plug, we are we actually do uh, Investor Source, my partner here, Jenny. Okay. Um, the next one that's coming up, and why we're talking about a lot of this, is the Investor Dream Team, where we have my good friend uh, Wayne Brooks, who's with Iconic Partners, Isaac Rowe, uh, Heartwise, who actually uh, was on our very first podcast, my good friend Jake Barnes at Fund That Flip, myself, uh, Kevin at MS MFS Supply, and again, Sean. You're going to hear me mention Sean's name a lot. Um, the main reason, I, and, you know, to, I guess to put it back on the lending side, why should you get a home inspector? Um, we had a transaction where the, and again, appraisers aren't legally licensed general contractors. They're not foundation experts. But what they're afraid of in this market, especially now that there's a downturn, is Fannie and Freddie, the overseers of all of us, get bored and they like to poke things and look through things or whatever. So appraisers are trying to cover their license, but a great home inspector like a Sean, you know, full disclosure, mm -hmm. who I know Sean, Sean does investor and he does first time home buyer stuff. 
um, they can walk through a property and, you know, they're legally licensed to give you that information. And if there's something that's in there that's a little sketchy, they can get a general contractor or some of them are general contractors. Um, they can give you a true, you know, valued opinion on it. But how that fixes the problem on the lending side is if you get an appraisal, there, there's 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 appraisal that says this is good to go, this is as is, and then there's appraisal that says subject to. And what lenders and realtors all hate alike is when you get a subject to and you have like seven days and you're like scrambling and you're like, oh my God, what do I do? A lot of times a home inspector can prevent that from happening. So I don't care, you know, what your realtor saying, whatever, always get the home inspection, never skip out on that because a lot of times that, you know, keeps you, it, it, it's, it's somebody that's already coming in before an appraiser even gets there and yeah. says, this is, you know, um, this is X, this is Y, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now, the flip side is there also are, you know, home inspectors that will give you a 35-page report and they don't really explain it and then we get it and then the person's panicking and they're ready to walk away and yeah. it's like, that's not stuff you walk away for, you know. So it's a never-ending balance and again, this is, you know, why you need like a frontline home inspectors that, again, they're going to tell you everything that's wrong but they're also going to say, hey, this is just general cosmetic 100%. stuff, you know, wear and tear, which is a huge difference and then I'm sure in the staging, um, the staging piece as well, you probably, you know, are in with that as well. Yeah, absolutely. All of it. Um, so Cinco de Mayo, the day after we have, uh, a whole thing going. <laughs> I did not know that that was, we have the fourth and the fifth. Yeah. Why do you think I've been stressing you guys about getting this flyer out? Because I have two, two events that I'm, the marketing machine is currently promoting. Um, so Mark, how many, how many, uh, realtors do you have on your team? Uh, eight. Gotcha. Um, and uh, obviously, they're all probably going to be there, right? We're going to be partying. I don't think so. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you first... I'll be there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> There's the party right I'm here. I'm coming. That's right. <laughs> party is coming in Jenny. Jenny's going to come to party. Um, how did you get from, you know, one agent to eight? And, like, what were some of the things that you ran into when it came to, like, really trying to... Co or maybe you still run into, because I know I run to it when I'm trying to manage my people. Like, how do you... What's like the biggest piece of advice you can give for somebody that would like want to come join your team and what makes you different in terms of like the support? Well, so I'm always available. I just had a recent agent join my team from, uh, I won't say from where, but uh, the agent came in and, you know, she actually called me to, to offer to an open house, completely different brand, not even the same brand. And I was intrigued. I said, this is awesome. Yeah. She belongs on my team. That kind of ambition going out there and she was currently on a different team they just didn't have enough listings to keep her fed and keep her doing open houses and stuff so i brought her over introduced her to everybody I actually brought her out to our grand open party and i just had to have her on our team because that was the exact kind of customer experience and drive that i want working around us um so the way that i a take care of the agents that work on our team is one we do provide training coaching how to close deals not just the stuff you just learned in school for, what is it, 120 hours, I think? Yeah, I'm something. pretty sure I didn't apply anything. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. You leaps and bounds? You're yeah. sure? Sorry. Compared to like our, <laughs> we, have 20, we have 20 hours that we take, yeah. and then you can take the test compared to what you go, go mm -hmm. through. And it's crazy that on either side, like, there's people that don't know things after all that. <laughs> not, not. I remember one of the questions was, how much cement would you need to mix to make a like a 10 by 12 that's impressive i'm yeah. like what am i really gonna i got nervous i'm like am i really gonna have to learn this no no jenny you're never going to need to know what that but is but it's on your question but it's on, on the, the test, test stuff. <laughs> Bro, but it, there's not like legal stuff like no. what happens if this and this happen you get no real training there or if you're in a multiple offer situation in 2019 20 21 22 how do you make your your, your <laughs> offer stronger than someone else's offer none of the stuff that we use day to day that we really need to know to, to, to be solid, you know, real estate agents. No. So thanks for that schooling. No, that, that is actually a good question. Like what, how do you deal with that situation in a market like this when there's 19, 20 offers? Well, so there's uh -oh. a couple ways. One, I think you work with both of you, by the way. Jane. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. 
You go first. I mean, there there are multiple ways. You know, I mean, obviously now I would I would never tell any of my my buyers um, inspection. Always get an inspection, but you can clearly um, do it for just informational purposes only. There's escalation clauses, which I don't love. Um, I don't love those either. I one hundred percent. Even in the height of all this, when when everybody well, that's was bad. waving. That it is back. It, it wasn't. It went away for a little mm-hmm. while, and then they brought it back. And I will tell you this. So I just recently sold my house because I wanted to get out of the area for better schools for my children, and I had an escalation clause on my home. I, I did pick the people with the escalation clause. However, I did not accept their money. So I gave them back. She's nicer than me. What the highest offer was. <laughs> I, you know, I just, my heart was, was for them. And I will say this, too, because you said it before. Um, I had a cash offer, was the first offer, and it was um, the inspection broke my deal. Yeah. Because the guy was like, uh, clean the gutters. That is what broke my deal, was because he wanted me to clean my gutters. And like, this was for informational purposes only. Like, I'm good. I'll relist it. And I did relist it, and I got 10000 over asking. Yeah. Nice. So thank you for that. I'm glad. Thank you, Inspector. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> I will rem- you will remain well, nameless. Well, agents, because <laughs> some agents go out there now, and it's actually one big, it's a brand. It's not yours or, or the one I'm with. And, and that's the difference in who you work with. It's shady. You're going to call informational. I don't know what the conversation looks like on the customer lens, but you have agents like us, including a seller agent. You own your property. You're excited that the contingencies pretty much non-existent, but they want to know what they're buying and you understand it right. as a seller or a seller's agent. You take them through the journey. Hey, this person's not doing any inspection. Their price is high or it's low or whatever. Hey, this person, they're paying a little less, but they're just doing an informational inspection. Hey, this person, you know, you go through all of it and then you pick the person that's informational and then they get the information and then they want to ask for repairs and things to be done because the agent led them to believe just to get the signature to school them on, you know, how to write their offer. The agent led them to believe that this information was to be used so you can negotiate right. your repairs. Yeah. yeah. But that's not the way it's It's explained. not the way that it works. And that's a, just another point of, like, not having great, I'm sorry, but great agents or agents that are informed and informed enough to inform their clients. Because then what happens well, now, time is wasted, you're out of a deal, you know, you're back on the market, and it's just, you know who you're working with. And there's a scenario, like, you ask, what do you do? So... You know, if I were to buy a house on the market and I had to make an offer, I had to guide one of my clients to an offer. First, I'm going to um, build a relationship with the listing agent and see exactly what's going on there. Right. If they have 10 or 20 offers, which which is back. I've had tons of offers in the past couple of weeks. One in Rocky River went $50,000 over ass. They had 12 offers. Can it go away? Can, I'd like it to go <laughs> away. Well, can, no, can we explain when you're putting money over ass, can we explain how that works and what happens if the market turns? Yes. Yes. Well, do you, one of you guys want to explain or do you uh, want me uh, to? Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll explain. Because <laughs> I can't, Rick but you're the lender. Is, I'll explain oh, it's it. a lender thing. I'll explain it well, from the lender Well, for you, it's a, different, it's a different viewpoint than it is yeah, from an correct. agent's side. So correct. for us, it's different when it goes over asking. Because right. you may not get the house. And you're not going to get the house. Well, if you're the not house might to... not appraise. It's... And then what happens when the house doesn't appraise and you don't have an appraisal gap? Well, then right. you're in trouble. And there's a never-ending struggle of what that looks like. And again, I'm not here to tell you, I'm not here to say for or against because, you know, have we had clients that obviously offered well above listing? Yes. And we finance it as well. But I think that there are agents that are kind of lazily, that's even a word, going about. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like a word. <laughs> I liked it. I get corrected yeah. from my grammar all the time. <laughs> um, but I think there's a lot of, like, agents that will not completely explain what transpires. So in an appreciating market, there's absolutely nothing wrong with offering over ask, you know. And we've seen appreciation in somewhere in the 15 20% range for 24 months in a row. That's a good thing. So, but the flip side is, and when you're going into a recessionary market, and the concern that I have when I see people, you know, putting thirty, forty, fifty thousand bucks over over a uh, list on it is, like, if the market, and there's no data that's going to actually point toward, like, there's a lot of like pandemonium. You guys get the same thing with, you know, all this, all these websites are just shooting out this, like, wildly misinformed information about where the market's going. There's no pending like market crash 
Um, now, are there some people that are going to get a little squeezed through this recession that we're going through? I don't care what the government calls it is the recession. If you look at all the data, are there some people that are going to get squeezed and have to sell their house quickly? Yes, but there's still an inventory shortage. So what that causes is a lopsided supply and demand curve. So obviously we're not going to see um, 9 million arms readjust and just completely deflate markets. But um, the flip side and from the lending side and from somebody that made it through the crash that was in the business in 2005, 2008, that remembers when his head under underwriter came down and literally said, you know, X, Y, Z bank is literally not funding anything. Like I always look at it as if that moment happens again, which again, data is not pointing towards that. If that moment happens again, can I sit there in good conscience and say that I put people in the right situation for them? Now, some people, if they're finding a school system for their children, absolutely. Like maybe that, hey, that's your permanent house. Cool. But I think the, the thing that we're not explaining to people is just in the off case that something did happen, like you got to realize that that money you probably won't get back at least for a period of time. That's the only There's thing. There's no that I, equity right away like there used to be, right? Yeah. Like I, so this last house that I just... I do live in flips too. So I've the last three homes I've lived in was they were live in flips. To my, they did my two and a half years in them, um, and I I made a hundred thousand dollars minimum minimum off of both Is of that them. It? I, I was, that's that was that's it. good spread. So a hundred thousand off of that's both of uh, off of both of them, and again one off was each <clears throat> each. Wow. She needs to be flipping Each. more. <laughs> yeah, so and, just and, one. Huh? But again, like a lot of it was, and I didn't even do a ton of updates on them. My my ex husband was super handy, handy enough, Good to, job, handy enough to sell, help me sell the houses for you know. But staging was huge. I'm. I mean, it was again like I wouldn't have paid. I wouldn't have paid that. You know what I mean? There's no way I paid a certain amount, and then I listed it for a hundred thousand more. And and how long it. did you live in these? Two and a half years. Good question. Yeah, that makes a lot. Yeah. Because you know, well, when I'm, you I'm you know obviously avoiding like issues, but yeah, two and a half years. So capital gain taxes. No, I didn't have. I had to. I made, yes. <laughs> but that's the issue. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the there's, issue. There's and other so, yeah, ways of you obviously know, maximize your. Oh, we'll get to that later. I can't wait to get to that because now I'm now I'm like waiting. What have, I'm ready to buy more. Got three obviously. Tahoes pulling up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Jenny. Wait, we are live. <laughs> we are live. This is a live. Uh, That's her. Whoops. She made that. <laughs> Jenny who? <laughs> Exp. No, <laughs> Those seven thousand agents or whatever, seventy thousand uh, right. agents yeah. pulling up uh, like MIB. <laughs> <laughs> How much did you say? I do have a gun. <laughs> Wait, so. what was that? And how long were you there? Yes. Um, so, yeah, so I did live in flips, and I, I mean, I made my and money roll it back. right back into real and, estate. And I... And I did, I did roll it right back into real estate and then just flip this last one. And obviously didn't make as much because I wasn't living in it, but it was great off market deal and learned so much. Like you just said, like you, you're doing them. And so it's, I, I'm witnessing it, helping my clients. Like I'm literally going to showings with my clients and they're like, well, what about this? I'm like, oh, that, you know, like here's the situation with that. And it just, it makes you better. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes you a better agent. So I do love that. But it's just cosmetic. Yeah. But my point was being like, how much more are people going to be asking for houses? And somebody said to me the other day, like, a house is worth what somebody's willing to pay. And I'm like, but is it? Yeah. Like, is it? Like, is it really worth what someone's willing to as pay for? As long as the neighbors. So if you're a cash, <laughs> I know this is going to sound funny. As long as the neighbors are also paying that much. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, that's, that's, well, that's where, well, that's where <laughs> you know, your comparables right. come from. And I, and I just sat through an appraisal training, and it was absolutely amazing. Thank God. I think more agents should do that because mm -hmm. I can't Yeah. Agents no, and, no it's great. And that's a great part about my team is that we're constantly learning. We're constantly training. And, um, that's and big. just the only way that I'm going to get better is if I keep sitting in training. So I'm just and surrounding myself with people like you guys. So thank you. But, um, You're welcome. But, uh, <laughs> I'm not switching brokerage. But <laughs> I'm not <laughs> asking. But uh, the point Selling is, is like, I learned so much from sitting through this appraisal training and, and how they're doing it and how they're, you know, um, just how the market is, is shifting back and forth and, and how you can fight when they're not coming in at appraisal. And I'm like, wait, can you just tell me what I can do when that doesn't happen? It hasn't happened to me yet. Yeah, I've I've had... Very few not appraise. And it's not about, like, here's the tricky, dicey field we go down, right? If we all look at our home's value from two, three years ago, and, and some people listening in want to know what my home is worth, and I'd say that's 
pick up the phone, give me a call, 440-529-9577. And I, one more time. One more. <laughs> 440-529-9577 because some people go. are thinking, oh, my gosh, it's gone up that much. How did Jenny make 100K twice in two and a half years? And what I want to say is it it is what a buyer is willing to pay and what a seller is willing to sell as long as we can keep the emotions under control because some people lose so many offers that the checkbook comes out and they're willing to do things. And in 20 and 21, we saw people cashing out 401ks and stuff like that. Now, would it be wise to go rent for years to wait for the market to come down? I did this math with a client the other day. They said, hey, I'll, I'll just go rent. I'll, I'll teach this market. Mortgage good. coach is good for that. It, yeah. it actually breaks it down. Exactly. So, but if we're at $2,000 a month in rent times 24000 a year, throwing that money away, You'd be better off paying the slightly higher mortgage and refine it later on. Yes. Right? R- and you rent get tax is 100%. Benefits. Rates are. Exactly. Whatever. Right. Like five, six yeah. ish. I'm not legally allowed to say that. <laughs> so. I mean, rates, I'm just they're saying not what even I saw. that bad right now. They're just more than what people were used to seeing and used Correct. to paying. They're not Correct. bad. Mortgage rates aren't bad. What the problem is is inventory, right? Mm-hmm. Is that there isn't enough inventory, and so then people aren't able to afford as much as what they, they used to be able to afford. And. You know, you're getting houses with wallpaper and houses with, you know, outdated bathrooms and people are getting scared. And what I would say to that is don't be scared. Like little, those things are easy to fix. And over time, they're easy to fix. And you, if you need staging, just call me and I'll come help you design your house for you. Plugs, plugs, (laughs) plugs. I love it. So call me for real estate. (laughs) (laughs) Just remember, if you're listing and you want your house uh, to sell for more, you can call me and I'll stage it for free. 440-773-1313. Say it one more. Time, 440-773-1313. Okay, okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. They, they do like 440 numbers on the air. So, <laughs> so you, Central, what area are you mainly in? So we so we have offices throughout um, Northeast Ohio. So I live in Oberlin now, back home to my roots. Um, I have my real estate office in North Ridgeville. Uh, we cover, you know, we have an office in Beechwood, Mentor. We have offices all over the place in Shaker, and then we also have, you know, the West Side location. But the thing about agents, and you can contest this because you guys don't have very many physical offices throughout, we your, don't. Yep. throughout your company. Office doesn't really matter because our office is typically a client's living room or their new home they're looking for. Sure. for. Now, we love our office. We have a 5,200 square foot place for agents to learn and, and come And what's in. the address there? Because that's uh, three, what we're having the sink three, of the four, three, one, three, Center Ridge Road in North Ridgeville, Ohio. It's right next to the Giant Eagle. You can't miss it. Cinco de Mayo. There is going to be plenty of margaritas. What's the jalapeno? I love what's margaritas. The name of the other spot? Fiesta Jalapeno. Fiesta Jalapeno. That's going to be the official after party. Yeah. They're giving us all the chips and, and salsa and guac that we want. Yep. I'm so excited for that event. But uh, uh, I guess... Since we're getting ready to wind up here, one, one, uh, one, I guess, piece of the future that you see for yourself, what, what does that look like? What does the future look like for you? Uh, right now, uh, helping solve the inventory problem. Um, I've assembled a off-market marketing and real estate uh, company that uh, will be helping find and shake every tree we can uh, to help with inventory. And that's instant, immediate cash offers which we do guarantee immediate cash offers, 10 day or less close, meaning if you have an issue, you want to move, you don't want to do with your house. Uh, we're also going to help facilitate, help build, get the products done. And um, we do have internal construction teams that we do run through our projects that handle all of our assets. And then uh, we'll also continue to be the most loved and most recognized and trusted real estate brand. And I'm looking forward to helping add on and build on to that. Now, Jenny, what's your rebuttal? <laughs> I mean, no, I think that, honestly, I think that's great. I think that's a great way of doing business. And, you know, I mean, if if you can start shifting the real estate market, then obviously that's going to help me with my business. So, so go get it. Good for you. Let's do this. Yeah, see, we at eXp, we like to support other people, no matter what brand they're from, no matter what brokerage they're from. We learn from you, you learn from us. So I'm, I'm, that's wonderful. Good for you. There is actually another mortgage lender (laughs) that is on the event. That's Cinco de Mayo, uh, Conrad Mortgage. Good friend of mine, Lindsay, actually just, um, transition to running his own thing so uh to your point like you know you have respect for mutual respect for each other and it's all fun and games or whatever but fiesta jalapeno sorry i dropped the ball on that again or bringing margaritas all that good stuff um frontline uh, uh home inspectors um if you are purchasing a house you definitely want to reach out to my guy sean uh, even on the investor side he actually does them both 
Uh, First Liberty Insurance, I actually utilize them. My good friend Tim Rennert, he actually will be at the event. Ohio Fast Title, we do a decent amount of business with. And Tour to Space, uh, we were going to try to sneak in here, but last time it was so hot in here, and these poor guys that are behind the boards were sweating, so it was um, it was a little <laughs> too much. So um, big shout-out to them. Uh, make sure you check us out. Um, I'm losing my headphones here. Um, make sure you check us out uh, the first Thursday of every month. Uh, again, Icon, Cowork. Lakewood, Ohio. Um, what's the address there, Jenny? 17415 Northwood Avenue in Lakewood. We are inside uh, the old St. James's School. So um, we have a large parking lot, plenty of parking in Northwood and Granger. Uh, come see us. We have drinks. We've got Jamaican food coming for this next one. Mm. Wayne's getting it catered. catered. We really can't wait. I, I honestly think this is going to probably be the biggest one that we've had yet with some amazing information from um, these amazing men. So come see us. Come hang out. Ready to rock. Mark Federer, appreciate you coming. That, on that note, we are signing off. Thanks to uh, WOBL, the gentlemen running our boards that are the unsung heroes in dealing with all our pandemonium. But appreciate you guys. You can check me out at rickrucker.com. And that's, uh, that's it for today. Bye, y'all. Bye. Right. The proceeding was a paid informational program. The views and opinions expressed were not necessarily those of the staff, management, or advertisers of WOBL Radio.